And bada bang. Bada boom. Um, uh, um, um. Oh, oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say, my day was a little bit, uh, a little bit knocked off kilter this morning because, um, Microsoft was like, oh, we're just gonna do like a little celebration thing, just you know, to celebrate for Xbox being around for twenty years. And then I was like, hmm, they're gonna release Halo Infinite early because there's rumors that they were gonna do that. And they're like, uh, just watch, just watch the video. And then I watched that video while like half focusing on homework. And then they're like, yeah, Halo Infinite's released. Uh, the multiplayer is out right now. Go download it. I was like, oh. <laughs> so my ability to get homework was significantly hindered by that. Mm, Josh, you got owned by the Microsoft. I did. I did. <laughs> Bill Gates, He's a, he's got a number on me, I tell you. Yeah. He, I tell you. He knows you. He <laughs> knows you. Yeah, personally. Uh, but did you get your homework done? That's the main question. You know, I got some of it done. Um, that's good. That's something. Yeah, that's yeah something. thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to get judged for not having gotten all of it done. I was yeah. like, you better not. <laughs> Who am I? Your, your uh, judge? I don't know. Yeah, fair. That would be crazy, though, if like whenever you submitted homework... It went to like the homework judge, and mm-hmm. then the teacher like just put on like a funny wig, and then hit a gavel a couple of times. And I was like, "F," and then like uh, that's it. Yeah, you and I have different definitions of funny. <laughs> uh, for those that uh, those that aren't in person with us as we do this over, over the internet. Kendrick just sent me a document right as he said that we have a different definition of funny. And the document's name is Bonus bon, Bonas Episad. And I started cracking up as I saw it. So we do have some overlap in our funnies, I guess. <laughs> yeah, except you have a weird fantasy of being scolded. You you get off on <laughs> you get off on being scolded by a teacher in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i definitely have heard of the like uh that whole like fantasy regards to teachers but i've never thought about it in regards to like a courtroom setting just mm. like <laughs> judge me just, oh no <laughs> no no unsubscribe <laughs> unsubscribe uh, <laughs> oh man you know, it's been a long time since we've recorded a- anything, and I haven't had any reason to break this microphone out in a while. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of reorganized my desk area a lot and kind of had to redo um, uh, the cables and everything for this mic. And I was really worried that we'd sit down tonight and I'd hit the old on button and nothing would work so i'm glad that i didn't have to change anything and it all seems to be working knock on wood yay that's the christmas miracle i've been going to the movie theater a lot recently and seeing a lot of stuff and uh, oh yeah it's been it's been a lot i've been like oh my god there's so many movies to see yeah and then you tweeted out that like all of your dvds just got available at the library too and Uh, you're like no (laughs) the library uh, we just got back from vacation and I went to the library and I currently have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven DVDs from the library. You have, what are VDs and why do you have 70 of them? Uh, you don't know what a venereal disease is? Uh, I guess your your generation probably calls them STDs. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I was like, what sort of old man virus is this that you're talking about? Have you really never heard that phrase? I don't think so, no. Wow. It is a uh, older turn of phrase, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know why. I don't know, like... I assume it's basically the same thing. Like, we probably learned more science, and then we're like, we have to add the science before it, the rest of the letters. 
Yeah, that's definitely what the S means. <laughs> Scientifically. Oh, is venereal disease? To venereal <laughs> disease. Yeah, it's the, they're the exact same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Weird. <laughs> oh, why did we why did we switch that? I don't know. <laughs> like Maybe there's not enough letters in this thing. Let's people use had a, more letters. <laughs> people had a hard time pronouncing venereal disease, I guess. Or spelling mm. it maybe. Mm. But you just do V D and then you don't have to spell it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There you go. I know. Somebody should put us in charge of English. Yeah. Wow, if you look at our top episode list. On the six anchor, the, yeah, the sixth sense like vastly outweighs all other episodes. Oh wait, maybe oh, that's yeah. maybe that's uh, within a certain time frame. Yeah, it was. Wow, yeah, in all time, according to Anchor, the sixth sense has ninety two plays. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's like double any yeah. of the other ones. <laughs> I guess Blind Date has fifty three, but apparently somebody's really good at uh, <laughs> you know, like advertising <laughs> it's yeah. not us that's one of our guests <laughs> did you say bad advertising oh no advertising oh bad advertising would have been pretty good bad advertising that's um pretty, that's pretty are, is there like any dad advertising that we could sign up for where like oh, one of yeah. our dads plugs our shows in like a little commercial or something it's like yeah well this is this is kendrick's dad and i just wanted to tell you to tune into where there's a willis there's a way and then do that uh, mm, it's that was a good <laughs> good bit you had there um at uh at my church not too long ago they restarted their uh kind of open mic night uh event that they have like once a <laughs> month or once every six weeks and mm-hmm. i had a guy reach out to me and he was like hey are you interested in putting anything together we're looking for alternatives to the typical spoken word and music submissions we get to open mic night do you have any like comedy you do and I was like, no, I do not have a stand-up routine that would uh, be great for a church open mic. But uh, ever since then, I've been I've been contemplating. Give myself a couple minutes of um, great church-friendly humor. All I have to do though is like figure out how to plug the podcast a lot. Yeah, exactly. Although if I bomb, I then a... people are going to be like, Ugh, "Get get these people." <laughs> Get these people out of here. No, no. if you bomb, you just say, but my co-host is hilarious. And then people will listen to it to see. And then they'll be like, oh, damn, that other guy was funnier. Yeah, if you think I'm bad, better. if you think I'm bad, check out my co-host. <laughs> um, imagine, like, going to this open mic thing, and then they're like, all right, so now, now it's going to be Kendrick. And then you're like, all right, hey, guys, uh, so I run a podcast, and we're just going to do a live episode for you right now. And then I run in with like a table folding table and like start plugging in mics and stuff yeah, on there. Yeah. And we just our do whole, like a live episode. Our whole open, the open mic, like five minute slot they give us is just a comedic <laughs> setting up a in-person recording, which like, we oh, then steamroll through. Yeah, yeah. Like, Oh shoot. I got the wrong MIDI adapter. Hold on. Uh, are you mono or, or a stereo on this output? Here? <laughs> Good night, everybody. That, it's yeah, great. is that our whole bit? I was going to yeah. say. And then we go, oh, that's time after yeah. like futzing about for five minutes. Yeah. Oh, man. It'd be like the Three Stooges if they were two and tech go related. On. Go on. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, it would be funny, but mainly only for like a crowd of people that <laughs> listen to podcasts, I guess. <laughs> like, I think a lot of people would just be like, what's wrong with these people? It would be funnier to do that and then have several people there who are recording this happening and are recording people's reactions as they are confused. And then you turn it into like an office mm. or parks and rec sort of mm. thing. You know, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like a uh, officer parks and rec. Uh, I like parks and rec because I don't think it did the same thing the office did, which was, Look at me be awkward. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, um, it, Parks and Rec just moved off of uh, Netflix or moved off of Netflix at some point. 
recently. To Peacock, right? To Peacock, yeah. And I don't have premium Peacock. I you got... Need, wait, you need premium Peacock? Well, like, if you use regular Peacock, it um, just, like, only shows you the first couple of seasons. If you want to watch oh the regular... Gosh. If you want to watch the other seasons, then you need premium Peacock. And the, uh, like, first couple of seasons are kind of rough. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not only is um, that streaming service confusing, their their free and pay tier is very obtuse. Yeah, uh, I work currently. Um, me for the first time. Me for the second time. My wife for the first time watching Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm. which is on Peacock, and. Uh, it i was i i didn't start it for quite a while cuz i was like oh i don't i'm not a subscriber and then i finally was like oh wait there's two and it's on the freemium package and apparently there's supposed to be ads but because my ad blocker runs sometimes the ads don't show up and then it's just ad free and i'm like oh great this was perfect oh I don't know. so you do that on a computer uh yeah yeah we were watching it on our on my laptop while we were traveling recently mm, um okay but but now that we're home, we'll probably watch it on the TV again. It was just the whole the whole streaming economy we live in. Very confusing. At least it's not Peacock Plus or something. At least it didn't have Plus Bleh. in the name. Blah. <laughs> Bless. Yeah. And like Hulu has three levels, but I did not know that for the longest time. <laughs> yeah. It's just how many ads you see, right? Or is there something else? Well, it's like there's there's like the free version... There might even be four. There's like a free version, then there's like the poor man's Hulu, which has ads, and then there's like the bougie man's Hulu, who doesn't want to see live TV, and then there's Hulu live TV. That's right. Which is for for sports ball fans. Which is also hilarious because I'm pretty sure Hulu is majority owned by Disney, and so mm-hmm. um, the Disney machine is just like getting you twice, getting you at both ends. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Disney Disney machine is, um, you know, they make some pretty good content, but as a business model and from a consumer perspective, not the biggest fan of them, obviously. No, not at all. Not at all. Have you seen um, any new uh, good TV shows or movies recently? Um, I haven't seen any new stuff recently. The only new stuff that I've been watching is I am a, like cringy person and i catch snl basically every single weekend so that's oh, been about it oh that's been the new things <laughs> that's um not bad do you watch late night uh of any s- former flavor um i watch like if somebody on my twitter timelines like oh this john oliver clip was really great i'll watch that mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. i'll look up clips of late night every once in a while if i'm like I wonder if that Conan guy's still kicking. Um or I wonder if like this thing or if I see somebody that come across my recommended that is like uh, very interesting to me then I might watch it but a lot of late night just is so so frustrating to watch cuz it's very samey and it has this whole like oh this is a live conversation that we're totally having for the first time ever and it's like yeah, except for when you guys practice this and this thing is scripted, like, just to bits. So <laughs> if it's scripted to bits, I'd rather watch something that's got a decent script behind it, like a John Oliver segment. So scripted not particularly. to bits. But you do yeah. like SNL. Interesting. I yep. I don't personally watch either on the regular. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people of my generation are like very religious in their watching of late night and they usually have like their late night following you know the one they always watch um, yeah whether that's john stewart or colbert or or whoever mm-hmm. and growing up i watched conan off and on uh and i loved his influence on kind of the modern comedic landscape um mm-hmm particularly like through the Simpsons. I loved his Simpsons inner influences, but I never watched, I never became somebody who 
would ever watch the show just to watch the show. I also would watch yeah. a clip if somebody sent it to me, but I never watched the show. But I feel like I'm in the minority for my age group, maybe less so. I know you're a little younger than me. Maybe you know more people like that. Uh, but I think a lot of people in my age group particularly found that to be almost their replacement for what our parents had the nightly news for, which was yeah, kind of like uh, they knew the anchors, they knew the rhythms, they wanted to stay up to date on the news, you know, the previous generation's newspaper the, or the, pre, you know, the radio, so on, so on. And yeah. I think that it was their, uh, you know, my generation, the older millennials generation of like, we can get the news. We know it's going to have some funny times. It's going to have actual news. We're going to stay up to date on it. It's going to be a little more uh, cohesive than just reading Twitter I like yeah. the writers here. A lot of the writers on these comedy shows have gone on to do great things. Obviously there's like major writing teams and uh, some of them, John Stewart and others have like actually done great journalism and, and kind of brokered great stories and fascinating takes are not just kind of like a, a piece of comedy. Um, yeah. But, but I think I that that's largely different depending on like if it's political versus like feel good. Cause I would say that like, even though Fallon or um, Kimmel or uh, what's the British guy who's dances and does the ca- carpool karaoke. Oh, what's that guy's name? Uh, whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Yeah. Uh, those I would say are maybe less so that, but then like your John Stewart's, your John Oliver's, um, uh, your Colbert's, I Colbert, I, those yeah, are like infotainment sorts of things, and yeah, I think that that's totally spot on. And but I, even the even the Kimmels and the Fallons and you know the others, I I still think kind of fall in that same line. And I mean, you know, how long was the Carson show on? And I think mm-hmm. I think the unified, I. Th- I don't know if it's maybe the fragmentation that kind of made it. It's almost too obtuse or or un. I can't. I feel like it's not something I can get into, even if I wanted to, because I'm not in it. And I that's true for a lot of things. I think. Mm-hmm. I think you could say that about Twitter. Uh, if you're not somebody who uses Twitter very much, you can't just sit down today and like easily become a big user of Twitter without, like a lot of work it's kind of an obtuse social network that yeah because you spend a lot of time cultivating that feed yeah and i and so previous to now you know you had carson or you had letterman kind of the name that uh was the nightly kind of late night talk comedy news stuff and Mm -hmm. it's just never something that clicked with me uh i don't know i don't know uh what the future holds there. I think those are still vastly huge, uh, you know, media empires. And like I said, I, I definitely feel like I'm in the minority of my generation of people who follow that. Um, so who knows? Yeah. 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 I do sometimes feel a little, to see. I sometimes feel a little FOMO because I don't follow them that closely. And I'm like, man, I wish I loved these guys as much so that I could watch these funny jokes, but it's just, I'm never like every morning or every night being like, Ooh, I'm going to turn on my, my guy, my shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. I totally get that. Um, so yeah, you are, uh, you've been watching SNL. I saw a ton of movies. I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm just going to call out. (laughs) I'm going to call out one that is on Netflix right now. It's the harder they fall. Have you heard of this movie? Uh, no, I don't think so. So it is a, it's fairly recent release. I think it came out. Uh, it looks like it came out October 22nd. It stars Ozzy beats, Edris Elba, Jonathan majors, Regina. King. Oh yes. I have heard of this. It is a yes. Western, uh, but like a, a, uh, like a modern, I don't, I don't want to say modern Western because it's definitely set in the West, but it has more of an updated soundtrack. Uh, and it is very funny, very visceral. It It's uh, definitely feels like it has some Tarantino roots. 
Uh, I had, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it other than that I was a Western and you start watching and it is extremely graphic, like very bloody in the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, Whoa, I guess that's the kind of movie we're watching. Um, very good. Very enjoyable. Probably going to be one of my favorite movies of the year. Uh, the costumes are fantastic. So I caught the end of it and I was like, Oh God, I need to watch this. This movie yeah. is great. <laughs> very, very good. Another, uh, thing I watched recently that I want to call out. It's also on Netflix. It's a limited series called midnight mass. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a horror, horror adjacent show. Um, uh, on Netflix, I think it's seven episodes, I believe. I'm not sure. But it's by written and directed by Mike Flanagan, who did uh, The Haunting of Hill House and a whole bunch of other movies. Um, or, uh, in addition, The Haunting of Hill House was another popular TV show from several years ago. Mm-hmm. Limited series. But uh, Midnight Mass, very good. Very interesting take on uh, like faith in a small community. And... Uh, very scary. I, I guess I wouldn't say very scary, but very unsettling, and uh, some like really great monologues near the end. Um, I think everybody should watch it, regardless of your stance on uh, horror. And I think even if that means just reading the plot summaries, I think it's something everybody should at least like ingest in some way. Um, mm-hmm. Just because it's like such a fascinating piece of storytelling that. I think people should be talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what I've watched recently. Um, nice. Yeah. They talked about that on one of the podcasts. I can't remember if I recommended it in like my tasty treats or not, but in the veterans of culture war podcast, they talked about that show for a little bit. And I was like, this sounds fascinating. Yeah. I, if you could find the time to watch it, I know it's seven episodes. So a little bit more work yeah. than like a movie is, uh, but it's very bingeable. Like once I started watching it, I was kind of like really sucked in, um, mm-hmm. but I know it's a lot. It also is not for everybody. It's for, I've seen it be very divisive around people. They watch one episode and they're like, well, the show sucks and they turn it off. I think if you don't like it, I would still encourage you to at least read the full uh, description because uh, I want to talk spoiler talk with you. Mm. But okay. It's very, it's very fun. Uh, some very fun stuff in there. Um, yeah. So good times. There's uh, my, I have a subscription service to Regal theaters, you know, the local movie mm-hmm. theater chain. And it lets you, I think I pay like $20 a month or something. And I get into uh, like unlimited movies essentially. And uh, I looked at the upcoming release schedule for movies this the rest of like between now and Christmas. And I'm like, I got to start calendaring out weeks in advance. What days I'm going to go see what movie, because there's too many things that I want to see too many interesting looking things. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, I think on Christmas, I'm going to go watch the new Spider-Man movie. I think, I think that's when that's coming out. So that'll be fun. Yeah, that's like my only plan, though, I think, for movies at this point. if It kind of depends on if I decide to go watch The Eternals, but I accidentally just didn't watch Shang-Chi, and I'll probably end up doing the same thing for The Eternals. I don't know. The, I, other than some of the older heroes, I'm not less interested in the Marvel stuff at this point. I think uh, Shang-Chi is actually on Disney Plus now. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I believe. Um, so go and watch it that way. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I enjoyed Shang-Chi. Yeah. yeah. That's ha- what have, I had heard. I heard that it was good. Having this subscription service means that I go see a lot of movies that I'm on the fence on just because, uh, you know, for no extra cost to me, I can see it in like a theater experience. Yeah. Um, which is pretty nice. So I'm definitely more willing to, go see stuff that I probably wouldn't have otherwise, but Shang-Chi I found was enjoyable. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about what we're going to do on the podcast. Sounds good. 
So if you're listening this far, thank you, listener. If you're just tuning in in the middle of this episode, well, I guess that's on you for being confused. <laughs> Maybe if we ever get our podcast on that like radio station or whatever the fuck was going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Hey, I submitted it. Second. As far as I know, there could be... If you're out there listening on the base camp uh or not the base camp the helium radio and life improvement media sub- streaming service uh you know send us an email let us know i'd love to hear from you um but yeah it's been a long time since we've recorded i want to say it was mid august late august so several mm-hmm. months uh josh uh you're go- you're starting school back up i yep. I'm getting ready to have a baby in a few months. So uh, just a couple small life events that are taking up a little bit of our time. Of equal size, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Basically, I think having a child is is like the same thing as writing a paper. But for, you know, the rest of your life, the same paper. (laughs) And you don't get it. Well, it's got to be a lot more pages. Like more pages. (laughs) You're never really given a grade by anyone except society. That is true. That is true. Um, you also uh, don't really have to cite your sources, as I learned when I was like, hey, my dad didn't make up the, <laughs> the like, you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit in the wind. He didn't make that up. That's a real song. I thought he just was talking out of his ass. So, Wait, I'm sorry, sorry. Hold on. What? What are we talking no, about? No. See, so, so you know the song that's like the, uh, you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit into the wind, um, no, you don't mess around with Jim. You know that song? What are you talking about? It's, <laughs> it's a song by uh, by by Jed something the something the fuck. You you don't mess around with Jim. It's by, um. Jim Croce. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you know the song? I feel so enlightened. <laughs> okay, one second. One second. I'm sending it to you. But anyways, I thought that my dad was just clever and making things up, but no, it's from a it's from a song. I also thought the like I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. I thought that was something my parents made up, and it it that is not true. Wow, that so basically you thought your parents were just like these gr- this great artists. Yeah, that... if you've ever seen the movie Yesterday where like a guy pops in and the Beatles don't exist and everyone's like, oh, this guy's amazing because he's singing all the Beatles songs. That was essentially what was happening throughout my childhood. Wow. I don't know whether to be proud of your parents or ashamed <laughs> in your uh, uh, <laughs> pop culture knowledge, really. but I mean, a little bit of both, but also that one can be blamed on my parents because I was homeschooled. So. Uh... <laughs> like, it was uh, it was their fault that I was not more pop cultured. Yes, because they didn't so. buy you the uh, textbook on pop culture. True, true. Published yeah, by uh... Coca Cola. <laughs> and the devil, because like pop culture is evil, you know. Because mm-hmm. it's the uh... it's soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, yay. Uh... <laughs> Well, folks, um, so anyway, all that to say, Josh and I have been a little busy, but we're still going to try to uh, s- whisper our sweet dulcet tones into your ear holes via whatever ways we can. Um, so here on the Willis Way pod, we finished up what we were calling season one, the first decade of the Willis works. So that was essentially a uh, blind date. His, his first leading role through the sixth sense, uh, which took us through the nineties, end of the nineties. And then we included also a discussion on moonlighting in there. Um, so before we keep going and in through into the two thousands, Josh and I decided we wanted to take some time and chat about a handful of other nineties movies that what helped set the tone for what other cinema at the time that these movies are coming out uh, was and kind of some blind spots for us, some of our favorites, um, 
help us kind of have an idea for what the the landscape was of society before we head into the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have four movies picked out um, that we're going to be sharing with you over these next four episodes. So look forward to that. Hopefully you enjoy them. They're not all, uh, none of them are Bruce Willis movies, obviously. They're all from the 90s. Um, they're not all action movies. So be prepared for some surprises because Bruce Willis, as we've learned, I think, Josh, I don't know if if you agree, but my biggest takeaway here is he's not 100% an action star. Mm -mm. No, he's not. So we wanted to make sure and reflect that in our choices, and we hope you will like them. If you, uh, listener, want to, you know, send me your favorite 90s movie that you wish we would talk about, but we probably won't, you could still send it to me. I'd love to hear you yeah, I'm be- sure that uh, that we could come up with some thoughts on it on the spot if you send us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, please talk about this movie. <laughs> I, uh, um, I guess we could say the first movie we're going to be releasing is going to be Ronin. Josh, have you seen this movie? I have not. No. Do you know anything about the plot? Uh, I no, no, I don't. Well, so, I know that the case ha- looks has like some blue tones to it. Is that related to the plot? Uh, so I also have never seen it, and I do not know the plot of the movie. So uh, all I can tell you is that uh, it stars Robert De Niro mm. and comes from 1998. This is um, a pretty well-acclaimed movie of the 90s that neither of us have seen, and so that's mm-hmm. why why we're starting with it. Um, if you had to guess, what do you think the movie's about? It's called um, Ronin, R-O-N-I-N. Stars uh, Robert De Niro, John Reno, Stellan Skarsgård, Sean Bean, Jonathan Price. Well, I already have a few guesses. <laughs> Stellan Skarsgård plays a man of dignification who um, is possibly evil, maybe good, um, but dignified nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Sean Bean plays a somebody that you think that you might like, but then he ends up being a bad guy, but in the end he dies. <laughs> and then our main character's name is Tom Ronan, a accountant who gets whisked into the, the world of New York mob bosses. Mm. I like that's, it. That's my prediction. <laughs> I like it. All right. So uh, we're going to save this, and then at the end of next week's episode, we'll play it again. Or the, yeah, the end of the, after we've watched it, we'll, we'll return to it. <laughs> Uh, and let people know if, if you're out there and you've also never seen Ronan, uh, <laughs> feel free to record a audio uh, message and send it to us. I'd love to hear other people's assumptions as to what this movie's about, but yeah. I have, I have a feeling that there's probably a lot of people who've seen it since it is a yeah, fairly well acclaimed movie. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing that one and that'll be coming out true here, here before too long. Uh, yeah, because I think we haven't we haven't talked about it specifically, but I think that we're trying to get like season two started up January sometime of next year or February, right? I think that's kind of the plan is to um, get some stuff put together in January and then see what we can do. Like I might have mentioned, I'm expecting a child in the end of February, and Woo! who knows what that'll. Well, I can say I do know that that'll definitely change my time. So (laughs) we're hoping to get some stuff recorded, some stuff put out so that there'll probably be another break then. And uh, you can wait in longing for us once that break comes. True, true. I am super excited to be doing this again, though. I feel like I've missed my Joshy times. Yeah, I've missed uh, missed getting to talk with you. It's a... It's a, a fun little a fun little little thing that we get to do. Um, I know that I've already mentioned it, but there's a an SNL um, sketch that is talking about like instead of sending men to therapy, you try to get them to start a podcast together. That's like the whole whole contrivance of this sketch, and it just oh, wow. makes me laugh. It's like yeah. men have such a hard time talking and being open with each other. Why not get them to start a podcast? <laughs> Just like I mean, they're not far off. 
they're not far off. Well, uh, right-click this image, report. I see myself in this image, and I don't <laughs> like it. Like, <laughs> wow, that was a that was a great way to just drop a meme in in oral in oral form here. Um, I, I hope everybody really appreciated that. I, um, yeah, I'm excited to talk, to chat with you. I feel like even our least liked Bruce Willis movies, it was still good to to sit here and chit chat and uh, work my brain as I as we were struggling to come up with anything positive to say about some of those more abysmal <laughs> Movies called Beavis and Butthead, or I know <laughs> Cosmic Sin. Oh yeah, Beat Cosmic the fuck Sin. Fuck out of here. <laughs> we haven't even we haven't even talked about since <sighs> since we've recorded. Bruce Willis has released a few new movies. Yeah, um, and they're all direct to streaming. Yep, and uh, they are all getting similar uh, news. Similar just, levels of acclaim. Yeah, so I just googled Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis sleepwalks his way through a new action thriller fortress. Uh, let's see. Apex review. Bruce Willis does little to elevate messy derivative genre cliche. Um, Apex Predator review. Chipper Bruce Willis is getting hunted for kicks. Um, Chipper, Chipper. Yeah. That's different, at least. Uh, yeah. So. Um, look forward to that. We'll probably watch those at some point. Um, maybe we should get, uh, if we can get like a, a group, a fan stream, stream watch along, get a little live, uh, live recording, uh, reactions. Oh man, of that'd it. be great. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, that'd be so good. <laughs> yeah. A lot of options. Uh, so, um, yeah. Also, uh, Josh and I are both trying to have a regular rotation of guests on here. Um, if you know of anybody who you feel like is, um, you know, willing and able and wants to talk about movies with us, uh, feel free to shoot their info over to williswaypod at gmail.com. Always. Um, please include a, a cover letter and a resume for them when you do mm-hmm. that. And as we've already known, Josh prefers judges, so. Yes. Ay, ay, ay. indeed. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, man. Well, yeah. Um, and then uh, do you know when people should look to uh, tune in their little computer boxes, their little phones into our podcast next? I don't. It'll be a surprise. Yay. <laughs> so check us out in a week. And if we're not there, check us out in another week. And if we're not there, you know, um, you can hit that little like subscribe to show and then uh, notify me when they release. And then you won't have to keep checking. That's actually probably so... <laughs> my, yeah, my first stay is don't wait the weeks. Just do that right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's what we were trying to do these past few months. So it was just kind of like us playing notification chicken with all of our listeners. Mm-hmm. Notification yeah. chicken. I'll also say, if you're listening to us over on the Last of the Action Heroes Podcast Network, uh, welcome. Glad glad you're here listening to us. This particular feed, uh, we're going to be throwing up some old repeats of older episodes. So... Uh, keep an eye out for those. Those will probably come before we get to the Ronin review. They'll have, um, they'll have that uh, info kind of tagged in the title, so you'll know that's an older episode. But yeah, keep an eye out for that. That'll be a great way to catch up on some of our older stuff. Um, otherwise, if you're listening to us not on the Action Hero Podcast Network, go check them out over at lastoftheactionheroes dot com. Is that right? Um, sure. That's that's close enough. <laughs> yeah, check them out. They have a lot of great good shows, a lot of great stuff, uh, a lot of fun, interesting things to to find out over there. Anything else, Josh? You want our listeners to hear about? Um, I don't think that there is anything else. No, I, th- I think I'm think I'm good to go. Welcome back, everybody, and looking forward to a lot of good discussions. 
of uh, these other movies and then Bruce's movies as he enters into the new millennia. Mm. Yes, indeed. Will computers still work? We don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe he just has to live on a dune desert planet. That's what the future's like. We'll, we'll mm. find out. Mm, true. Tune in next time. Until then, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Just because. And they say you don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't spit into the wind. You don't pull a mask off at old Lone Ranger. And you don't mess around with Jim. But don't